What's up everyone? So I'm always on the hunt for Jerry Garcia solos to transcribe and uh, I was listening to the Cornell 5877 show uh, which I've heard a thousand times before but in this particular case uh, Jerry's solo on They Love Each Other really caught my ear. As Garcia solos go it's pretty short and sweet doesn't move along real fast so it was actually pretty easy to transcribe and uh, there's just some super cool licks in it, and as you'll see here, especially the very opening lick of the solo is worth the price of admission by itself. So I'll play the solo here for you, and then afterwards I'm going to break it down a little bit. I probably won't show you every single note of the solo, but I'll break down the uh, highlights of it at the very least and uh, talk about some of the general concepts that he uses in the solo. So like I said, it's really that first lick that caught my ear. This lick is money, and I've heard similar licks uh, in other solos of his. And in fact, I did um, a short video on one of the licks that he plays in King Solomon's Marbles, and it's a very similar kind of thing. Okay, so the chord here at the beginning is G, and we're using a concept called neighbor tones, and you uh, hear this stuff in jazz a lot, and in fact I think this lick really sounds very jazzy. It sounds like something that you might hear Django Reinhardt play, for example. Uh, and what's going on is we're taking the notes of the G chord and we're sort of surrounding them by using the scale step that's above the chord tone and then a half step below the chord tone and then going to the chord tone. So it starts off by just going F sharp to G. And then the next thing that happens, we're sort of targeting this B here on uh, the ninth fret, fourth string, and we're going to the C, which is the scale step above it, to a half step below it, and then landing on the chord tone. And then he slides up into the 14th, 12th and 14th position. And I'm kind of picturing this little G triad here on the 4th, 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings. Slides up to that E, the scale step above the chord tone, half step below the chord tone, and finally landing on the chord tone. Same thing happens on the next string. Scale tone above the chord tone, half step below, landing on it. On the next string, again, we do the scale tone, this time it's C, to a half step below, and then landing on the chord tone. Then he jumps up to the first string, and now we're targeting this G here, and he goes, same thing, scale step above, half step below, onto the chord tone. And then he starts moving back down the chord shape, now we're targeting this D here, but he kind of reversed the order this time and did the half step below to the scale step above and landed on the chord tone. It's a super cool lick to me. I'll play the whole thing for you one more time. And another thing that I'll point out that makes this lick really work is um, an idea that Garcia used quite a bit bit that I would call like rhythmic displacement. He kind of, each, each time that he uses that neighbor tone concept, he does it slightly differently against the beat. So it really mixes up the sound of it and gives it a nice kind of bouncy syncopated feel. And that idea of kind of playing chord tones and neighbor tones on the beat or off the beat can really kind of create a lot of variation in the way the line sounds and it's super cool. So anyway, now we're up here kind of off of this little G chord shape here uh, in the 
15th position, I guess that is, the octave of this G chord, right? Just kind of on the top four strings there. So there's this little kind of bluesy lick, and then down the arpeggio. And now what he does here is also super cool. So we're moving from a G chord to a C chord, and in order to kind of set up the sound of that C chord a little more strongly, we use a G7 chord. So it's like G to G7, moving to C. And what he does to sort of outline that G7 is on this G here on the 17th fret, walks it down in half steps to the F. There's that flatted 7th. He does a cool thing where he jumps up to this E here on the uh, 17th fret also. It kind of implies the sound of a G13 chord, which is going to move us to the C chord. And that G13 is a real jazzy sounding thing too. So he comes back down the arpeggio and then, and then he finally slides down to this E on the 14th fret and that's where he nails the sound of that C chord. So he's targeting the E, which is the third of that C chord, um, by way of the flatted seventh of the G chord, that's that F. So that resolution from the G7 to the C is really outlined by that F to E, like you can hear it in this G7 to C. So that's another little kind of jazz trick there by targeting particularly the third of the chord that you're landing on. It really sort of captures the sound of that chord. Over the C chord then he really kind of continues in a very much just G major land here on the 12th fret. And in fact a couple times you hear him kind of emphasize that B natural over the C chord, which is also pretty cool. It kind of implies a C major 7 kind of sound over that C chord, which gives it this kind of cool old-timey sort of feel. Now we're back on the G chord, and there's another cool lick here where he's sort of implying a chromatic movement from the B up to the D, both are chord tones of the G chord, and he does a sort of chromatic thing. So he's finally bending that flatted fifth up to the fifth of that G chord. That's a very Garcia-ish lick to my ears. Now when it returns to the C chord, he gets way up high. And he does a thing a couple times in this little part of the solo that I think is pretty cool. He's going from A to A flat to G. So in relation to the C chord, that's the sixth, walking down chromatically to the fifth. One time he does it in the form of a pull-off, and the other time he picks out the notes. So that's another kind of Garcia-ish lick to my ears, that kind of walk down from the sixth, flat six to the fifth. Okay, so finally we're getting to the ending part of the solo where it follows the chords of the chorus. So it's going F to C to G. <clears throat> and he does it pretty close to the same way every time, or something pretty similar. Uh, so I just want to give you kind of the gist of what he's doing. Um, over the F chord each time it uses uh, the interval of a sixth, which is something that I've talked about in other lessons on my website. But basically, uh, for the F chord, I'm kind of visualizing an F bar chord here on the uh, 13th fret. And in particular, then, I'm grabbing the third and first strings out of that shape, which kind of outline the sound of that F chord. And then uh, the chord progression moves to a C and a G from there. And he kind of does, I guess, what you could maybe look at as a pretty much a pentatonic lick over each of those. So if we look at the 12th position, basically we have C and G pentatonic available to us in this position, and there's really only one note difference between the two. So uh, the G pentatonic here is probably the more familiar, so we'll look at that first. And I'm just going to look at the top four strings of that, by the way, we're not going to worry about the bass strings, but just starting here on the fourth string, 12th and 14th frets. Same on the third string, and then 12th and 15th on the first and second strings. So that gives you a G pentatonic, works perfectly over that G chord. And then if you take this B here on the 12th fret, second string, and just change it to a C, that, and the rest stays the same, that's now a C pentatonic scale. 
And then as the chord moves from the C to G, Jerry will very often grab this C and then resolve it to that B on the G chord. So again, it's that idea of um, resolving to the third of the new chord that you're landing on. So on the F chord, we have this sixth. And then over the C chord, we have what I think of as basically a pentatonic lick. And then resolving back to that B with a little bend. Then the second time it comes around, something similar for the F chord. And then looking at the C chord like this. And then this time he goes way up high to play this lick over the G, which also involves sixths. And then the last time, F again. And then this time he indicates the C using a sixth again, both here on the 12th fret, 3rd and 1st strings. And then finally finishes off by doing an almost bluesy kind of pentatonic lick over that G chord. Okay, so I made a web page, and I'll put a link in the description of this video to that web page. It's going to have all the stuff you need for the solo. It'll have the tab, the in PDF format, the transcription of the solo itself. Uh, it'll have the backing track. Um, by the way, to make that backing track, I actually just took the uh, piano solo that uh, comes right before Garcia's solo in the song, and I just made a loop out of that. Uh, so you can grab that backing track. And there will also be a clip of the original solo there, so you can hear that. So all of us Garcia fans know that uh, there's a certain something in his playing that's pretty hard to capture, and it's especially hard to capture on paper with tablature. Uh, so the transcription might not be 100% just exactly perfect, but it is super close, and it'll certainly get you in the neighborhood and get, give you a few licks to kind of keep in the bank there.